Well, we're heading back to the Nethercut Museum. Oh, wow. Uh, Merle, Merle Norman Company, the mm. cosmetics company. And the Nethercuts, who own that and made a lot of yes. money doing that. Oh, and my goodness. They've spent a lot of that money buying automobiles uh -huh. and trains and musical instruments. Oh, my. <laughs> They have one of the world's best automobile collections, so check this out, part two of the Nethercut Collection. Well, we're back at the Nethercut Collection. We were here a few weeks ago and promised to finish up on that, and so here we are doing that. We looked at the train last time we were here, a Royal Hudson. Not every car collection has a train. <laughs> and musical instruments. There's a music room up on the third floor of the Grand Salon, and below that, the Grand Salon, where some of the nicest of the cars are kept. And then below that is the lower salon. Again, some really nice cars down here, some incredibly rare cars. I love this Peerless. Isn't that something? That's beautiful. And a Vespa. <laughs> now, you wouldn't think that a $400 Vespa would, but you know, one of these was just on eBay for 120,000 bucks. Ah, uh, seriously, but Vespas are so collectible now. Ooh, and here we see one of the most desirable cars in the entire collection, a 1967 Ferrari Model 365 California Spider. When this was new, it cost $28,000, which is $8,000 more than the most expensive Lamborghini. There were only 14 of this particular version ever made, and that makes it one of the most desirable of all Ferraris. And there's more of these music boxes and musical instruments down here. seen some pretty fabulous Nickelodeons and music boxes in our travels, but these were some of the nicer ones. This is an amazing collection. J.B. Nethercut, who started all of this fun and frivolity, uh, well, I guess he just liked Nickelodeons and music boxes. This is a Mills player violin. Isn't that the coolest thing? I still don't see how they get this to work. You know, I don't either. For one thing, you got to tune these constantly. You know, it's a violin for heck's sake. And this neat uh, model ship uh, was the only one in the whole collection and Hummels. Oh, look at that. You know, mom collected Hummels and uh, now Myra's got that collection and other ceramic dolls. Those are beautiful. And these are positively huge. What would you say? Two and a half, three oh, feet? Oh, at least. Those are just beautiful, though. Porcelain and, and fine stitching. Just uh, unbelievable. Yes. And this is the collection of die-cast cars and car parts. <laughs> Look at the size of that. It's huge. You've always collected die casts. Well, Hot Wheels cars, these are just, what? Those are so cool. <laughs> yeah, these are more like Danbury Mint and that sort of thing, but they're just absolutely beautiful. I don't think any of these are scratch built models. I think they're all limited edition die casts, but there are scratch built items here. All these little tools, for example, are scratch built. Look at this, a tucker. Oh, we have one of those, only it's red. <laughs> Well, I think they've uh, put in a tucker here because look, they actually have a tucker in the collection and a Christie fire wagon oh, because neat. they have a Christie fire wagon. So a lot of the cars here and uh, well, the locomotive, uh, you know, they actually have the real item here. So it's kind of neat that they've been able to get the die cast of it as well. But the bulk of this collection is just, you know, limited edition die casts and brass locomotives and 
just fun collectible toys. And these look like hood ornaments, but they're miniature hood ornaments, probably also by Danbury Mint or something like that. But then, of course, real hood ornaments too. And horns, all kinds of different car parts, anything that's interesting or decorative. It seems like anything that's neat, they're collecting it. Yeah, there's dozens of these bulb horns, but there's also headlights and just all kinds of stuff. Stuff that you wouldn't even normally think of somebody collecting, but here it is in the cabinet. Carburetors. Oh dear, look at that. <laughs> Brass carburetors. And here's something you're familiar with, a nozzle off a gas pump. Oh my goodness, it looks like the one I worked on. Yeah, well, we needed one for our Wayne pump, and here's the one that you restored. Oh boy. Now, ours is functional, so it looks a little different. But there's our Wayne gas pump before and after. Oh, gee. <laughs> of course, the Nethercuts have a Wayne gas pump in their collection, too. Oh, look at theirs. Yeah, theirs is sharp. It's not a 615. I don't know what model this is, but it's sure handsome. I love their earthquake strap. I, we need to do that. And spark plugs. What a thing to collect. Yeah, old spark plugs, but they're neat. And JB's original collection, his marbles from when he was... <laughs> I lost my marbles years ago, but JB hung on to his. But you can always spot a true collector. <laughs> Absolutely. Their marbles looks like the ones I had when I was a kid. Yeah, just... But here's something we have never collected. Uh, no. Best of shows. He's got, gee, I don't know how many best of shows from Pebble Beach. Oh, gee. The best of the best. And here we have the museum building. It's right across the street from the Grand Salon. The collection's just too darn big to fit in the Grand Salon, so... It's in two buildings. Wow, sounds like our collection. No, <laughs> they have over 250 absolutely world-class vintage cars. JB Nethercutt started collecting cars in 1956. He formed a business with his aunt, oh. Merle. Merle? Merle Norman. Oh. oh, yeah, the cosmetic company. In 1956, he purchased a 1936 Duesenberg and a 1930 DuPont town car for 500 bucks. Oh. And then he took it home yeah. and restored it all by himself. Wow. Then he drove it to Pebble Beach and entered the concourse and won best of show. Oh my goodness. <laughs> With a car he restored himself. Anyway, he was hooked. Oh, no kidding. And he just started buying up everything in sight and restoring it. Well, JB passed away at 91 in 2004, and his son took over the collection and has been adding to it. Oh, my. Now, his son Jack took to cars rather easily. For one thing, his dad collected them, but he was also a professional race car driver. Wow. So, uh... After inheriting this fabulous collection, he's just uh, continued on in the family tradition. Now, all of this wicker work is just painted on like pinstriping, but with a thick paint, like a puffy paint, but not puffy paint, of course. My mind just boggles how they're able to do that and get such straight lines. Yeah, it's all just done by hand. And if you look closely, it's even woven one line over the other, up and down, just like weaving. Compared to that, regular pinstriping like this is child's play. No kidding. Packard, of course, merged with Studebaker. You remember we did that great show on the Studebaker Museum? Yes. And uh, we show some of the Packard Studebakers. There's a great collection of brass era cars here, probably some of the nicest brass era cars I've ever seen. But there's a lot of cars from the vintage era, all the way from about the turn of the century, clear up to about the 1970s. Wow. Every car here is fully operational. It's either 100% restored 
or it's in mint original condition and maintained to be fully operational. Oh, my favorite. Oh, look at that. <laughs> you know, with all of these great cars in the collection, you wouldn't think we'd fall in love with the 1915 Model T, but it's a couplet. Yes. Ford made a couple of these kind of unusual body styles, and they never really took off. There were the big four, the Roadster, the Coupe, the Touring, and the Sedan. But the Couplet was made for a very brief period of time, and only a handful of these things survive, and there's one right there. They're beautiful. It's sort of half Roadster, half Coupe. But what a collection of brass era cars. Oh, I love it. David would have gone nuts. What a shame that uh, he didn't live to see this because he was such a brass era fanatic. And this is the best collection of brass era cars I've ever seen. Me too. Rolls Royces. Yeah, the best known uh, luxury car. Oh, yeah. A whole row of Rolls. <laughs> and surprisingly, this is an Auburn Cord. Oh, really? Oh, wow. It's Look just at that an one. early one. This is the one we're familiar yeah, with. Yeah, that's the one I know. But the other one is just an earlier example. Oh, wow. And here is the aforementioned Christie fire wagon. Isn't that cool? It's so neat. It's just, it's basically just a fire pumper that normally would have been pulled by a horse, but it's been rigged up to this elaborate front wheel drive. Such an interesting configuration. And a 16 Dodge Brothers touring car. Oh, wow. A friend of ours had one of these, and this I wonder if this is his. It looks exactly like his, but always loved the early Dodge Brothers cars. And a Dort. It's a Dodge Dort. A Dodge Dort. <laughs> David had a Dort. Ah! Another Tucker. Isn't that neat? I think we're up to three now. Yes. We've seen three of them. They made 51 of these, but only 47 of them survive. And one just sold at auction for 2.6 million. Wow. It turns out the car is largely based on the Czechoslovakian Tatra Type 87 from 1938. Very, very similar features. It has the steerable center headlight, the rear mounted air-cooled aircraft engine, the whole thing. We covered that car. Uh, they've got one of those in the Mullen collection. Here's a link to that video if you want to go look at that. But the Tucker became so well known when the movie came out. Yes. Jeff Bridges did his <laughs> usual brilliant job of acting and immediately everybody became fans of the Tucker automobile. And here we have a 36 Pierce Arrow. Pierce Arrow was always uh, recognizable because they formed their headlights right into the fender like that. But clearly one of the best automobiles ever made and just possibly the finest American car made. And they're very recognizable hood ornament. Oh, I love that. It's just a gorgeous. Beautiful. And here we have a Pierce Arrow travel trailer. Yes. We both fell in love with this. Oh, those, that's quite the history there. Oh, boy. And, of course, it's being pulled by a Pierce Arrow. I mean, it would have to be, right? Right. Pierce Arrow certainly isn't widely known for building travel trailers, but they did at one time. They called this the Travel Lodge. Right. It was an idea that really took off. No kidding. And I think the price was reasonable at $1,200. Uh, it's a lot of money back then. Yes. But affordable. A lot of people bought these and it became a national phenomenon. No kidding. Look at the interior on this. Oh, the workmanship is unbelievable. It even has air conditioning. Can you imagine that? And there's some really elegant European cars in the collection. This is a Voisson. Oh, 
Oh, nice. We saw a bunch of those over at the Mullen. Mullen collects with San, but just an absolutely gorgeous car. This one belonged to Rudolph Valentino. Oh, my. <laughs> and here we have a Bugatti and a Tabo Lago. Certainly the most collectible and expensive cars in the world are Bugatti. I love the look of that Talbot Lago. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> it's just gorgeous. Uh, French Art Deco, what can you say? And the coachwork is by Falgoni and Falchi. That was really common with the French cars of the era that the car would be built by one manufacturer, but the body by someone else. And here, too, it looks like they've won quite a few prestigious awards. No kidding. <laughs> what a pair of automobiles. But everything in the collection is absolutely first rate. Well, there we have the rest of the nether Oh, cut. my. What a collection. Ah, uh, no kidding. It's, uh... It's neat that there are big collections like that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they don't stay together. I, I'm always reminded of the, the Hera collection in yes. Reno. Right. And that got divided up, and now it's it's the, the museum that's left there. It's not private anymore. Mm -hmm. It's a museum. So sometimes these private collections, if you get a chance to go see them, you should take the chance to go see them. Right. Because people pass on and mm -hmm. car collections get divvied up and or sent to court of another state something happens yeah um, you know the the larry miller collection i was just thinking that we got a chance to see that and i'm glad mm -hmm. we took the chance to see it because it wasn't too long after that yep. collection vanished went somewhere else and now it's kind of around Anyway, if you have been over the channel, do pop over to the channel. And if you're not a subscriber, do subscribe. Mm -hmm. And you can subscribe with the blue button. Are you ready for it? <laughs> so, <laughs> there it is. That blue button right there says subscribe. Well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here again on Tuesday with a Tuesday show. We'll see you then. <laughs> see you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.